What's up, Vikes? I'm Emma, and you're watching SVTV. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform, finding character, and giving others a voice. This is SVTV. Our school's playoff game is tomorrow night. Here's some more information. Shawnee County has just announced only 500 people are allowed at the football game this Friday. This includes players, cheerleaders, and band members. Let's see what Mr. Bushnell, Mr. O'Neill, and three players have to say about this. You know, we're not used to uh, having to make short notice changes, but at the same time, we were hoping uh, our numbers could remain the same or, or possibly increase, but with the spike in, in the COVID cases that have gone, gone on, we've, uh, we've had to make some decreases in those numbers. So, This Halloween weekend has had one of the biggest spikes in September, causing our COVID-19 cases to reach over 3,000 in one weekend. Hi, it's scary. I mean, you know, numbers are going up in Shawnee County. Numbers are going up across the state, across the country. And, you know, it not only affects, uh, you know, sports, it affects, you know, your school life, it affects, you know, your daily life, it's going to... The players are trying to keep the same winning mindset, no matter the amount of people. Our mindset going into the game, for me, would just be like thinking we're 0-0 and, and just like a new start to the new season. So we're all going to be hyped coming out here and hopefully get a dub. Just have like a winning mentality, you know, you know, think that we're going to come out there and we're going to play our best game and be better than them. No, I think, you know, week by week, you, you kind of look on film and you kind of see what the strength and weaknesses of the, the opponent is. And, you know, for us offense-wise, I feel like we can run the ball or throw the ball. So, I mean, we're, we're going to do what we have done all year and kind of, kind of mix and match and, you know, use our strengths to our ability, you know, defensive-wise. You know, we've seen spread teams, you know, so we're pretty familiar with, with what we need to do alignment-wise and responsibility-wise. So, so I, I think, you know, it's pretty much uh, just go play. Make sure to watch the live stream. Let's go, Vikings. Students, Seaman High School will no longer allow the use of gaiters, bandanas, or vented masks. For more information, check the Shawnee County Health website. Volunteers are needed for Harvester's Food Distribution that our district sponsors on Monday, November 9th from 3.30 to 5 o'clock. If you're interested, check Schoology. Parent-teacher conferences are taking place on Wednesday, the 18th. To schedule a conference, go to Power School and click Request Interview. The Writing Center is now open for appointments. If you're interested, email Ms. Sands. Student, students interested in being a member of the Seaman Printmakers Club can attend a meeting in Mr. LeDuc's room today during CALP. Congratulations to winners Lauren Feely and Emily Harmon for the Red Ribbon Kahoot. Stop by the Viking Brew to pick up a free drink. Seaman FFA is selling poinsettias. If you're interested in purchasing one, email Ms. Van Gordon. We caught up with some of the cross-country runners to recap their season. As a team, we did okay. And individually, I thought I did good. I got ninth. Um, I got my PR at City, which was at the Kanza course by Hummer. My PR is a 1908. Um, well, we've had a social distance at practice, and then we've also had to wear masks at meets. And at some meets, we've had to wear our masks for the first 200 meters. Towards the end of the season, we got to take them off like a minute before the race. So specifically for the girls, because that's who I work with most, um, we were uh, second in the city. Uh, third in the was windy. Um, we, when we originally saw the course, it's the first time any of us have run there. Um, we thought it was pretty flat, um, but because of the wind, it, it made the times a little bit slower than usual. Overall, uh, like I said, the girls finished eighth as, the te as a team, um, ran really well in a very, very competitive 5A race. Um, and and the, kind of the highlight of the weekend was uh, uh, Bethany Drews finishing ninth, which um, qualified her as an all-state. We have a very, very bright future ahead of us, so we're, we're looking forward to the season to come. Regionals was, it was uh, a peak, I would say. It was absolutely insane. I don't think we've ever PR'd that hard before. I don't think we've ever, yeah, there, 
our coach even said that there wasn't just one runner of the week after that happened. For all that he knew, it was all of us. We all pulled together. We all pulled through together, and we um, we definitely just just had an amazing race. And we've ran that course before, like several times, so we just knew it, and we knew this proper strategy. State was uh, we didn't expect it to be as rough as what it would have as what it was, but um, regardless, it, it was just like any other race. We put our best out there, and we put our best foot forward, and. Um, the race went pretty well. With the boys, it was a surprise, and we, we knew Lansing was good. We felt like we'd have our hands full with them, and you know, it was honestly kind of a surprise. Uh, we thought we could beat them, but I didn't expect to beat them uh, by 15. So our whole team, just just one through seven, really stepped up. Uh, we placed ninth, uh, which was a little bit disappointing, um, in that especially because Lansing came back and beat us, um, but uh, we're not hanging our heads. Um, we feel like. Um, you know, for our seniors, you know, we're going to miss them. Uh, hopefully, I'll, I'll be working with them at track, and I'll look forward to that. But as a program, um, it's hard to lose them. But our young guys, I think the challenge is out there to be really good uh, next year, and I really believe they can. Great job to all of those runners. Winter sports begin Monday, November 16th you must have a physical and a concussion form on file prior to tryouts. Stop by athletics to pick up a packet if needed. Students, there will be no individual game tickets available for Friday night's home football playoff game. All vouchers have been given to players for family and relatives. If you would like to watch the game online, you can go to the Seaman High School's website and click on the SVTV streaming link. Now, let's send it over to Zoe for the weather. Good afternoon, Vikings. Some interesting things going on today is the fact that it is National Redhead Day and it is also World Tsunami Awareness Day. I'm sure many of you have been noticing all these nice temperatures we have been experiencing, which are above normal for this time of year. And this is because of a jet stream that has changed its course and has been moving all the warm temperatures our way. Now this jet stream is going to change once again and is going to change for the colder side to bring us back to normal temperatures. As you can see for the rest of today though, we are going to continue in that warm area with our temperatures just climbing higher and higher in the 70s. For your SVTV 7 day forecast, as I said just a minute ago, we are going to be getting a lot colder before long. To start next work week, we are expecting a little bit of precipitation and our temperatures to drop clear down into the 40s and 50s. Now back to your anchors. That's all we have for today, Vikings. Make sure to have a great rest of your day.